today we look at global vectors or GLOV, a word representation scheme aimed at extracting semantic relations between words into their embeddings. Now we all know why word, in, word encoding or embedding schemes are needed in machine learning and that's the simple fact that the encoding scheme we as humans are most familiar with, that is the alphabet, actually carries very little meaning about the nuances of the word it actually represents. The need for good embedding schemes arises because we can't just simply feed a network the binary ASCII data or something one-hot encoded based on a comprehensive vocabulary because these soon blow up into unacceptably large dimensions which neural networks simply cannot handle. Now, natural language processing neural networks are also known to be performant almost exactly based on how good its word embeddings were. And so the goal of an embedding method is to resolve all of these issues and provide a learnable way for the model to place the words in the hyperspace where its location actually says something about the word and its relation to all the other words in its vocabulary. The term glove, as titled by the authors, stands of course for global vectors, and the similar, similarly titled paper, penned by Jeffrey Pennington et al. and presented at the Empirical Methods for Natural Language Processing Conference in 2014, details the implementation of the glove embedding algorithm. The work is popular and widely cited nowadays, competing with other, the other usual suspects of word embedding such as Word2Vec, RailBL, Seabow, and others such as BERT. But before we get into GLOVE, first we want to look at some of the other methods prevalent in, the word, embe in word embedding and discuss what GLOVE tries to improve. Matrix factorization based, method based embeddings date back all the way back to the 1960s with latent semantic analysis and are still used today in NLP models, not to mention the research improving upon these schemes being an active field. And for the most part, they still are very relevant and performant embedding methods. The problems, however, as noted by the authors of this paper, come from their inability to capture, capture contextual data in the word's neighborhood, and the fact that they are almost simply taking the probability of word occurrences, fail to distinguish between any sub or secondary meanings a word may tend to have. Another set of approaches are based on the shallow window where word representations are learned so that they are able to make predictions within a local contextual window. In the early 2000s, we began to see neural nets be being employed to learn these embeddings and in theory are market improvements over matrix factorization methods in that they are able to learn language patterns and semantics as relationships between the learned vectors, meaning a linear, linear operation, operation on on the vectors translates to some meaning shift or semantic correlation between its start and destination. But these schemes move the context window across the entire corpus, which means the repetition of words and phrases are not utilized and hence do not account for co-occurrence statistics. So GLOVE aims to improve upon all of these by capturing the context of the word in the embedding through explicitly capturing these co-occurrence probabilities. And this is empirically shown in the paper as per the chart below, where the words ice and steam are compared to various probe words here, solid, gas, water, and fashion. Now we can see that the word ice is related more strongly towards solid than it is to a gas. And the converse is true for steam as seen by the ratios calculated in the bottom row. Now, both terms have very similar large values with water, and on the other hand, very small values in the context of the word fashion. All this aims to argue the point that embedding should be built not on just the word probabilities, but their co-occurrence probabilities within the context. And this is what is going to be used in the loss function. The essence of GLOVE is then building a matrix of these probabilities and subsequently learning a vector representation of each word. We take a moving window of a set size taken as the context across the corpus 
And for every identified word I we wish to learn, we tally the presence of another word J, and noted, notated as Xij before putting into the matrix. The power of the proposed methods comes from the special way in which these values are counted up when formulating the matrix. Most other methods would simply count up the occurrences in the corpus as a statistical measure or count with a set within a set context. But with GLOB, we incorporate a notion of contextual distance between the words to build a more semantically meaningful embedding. And this is achieved rather simply by weighting the value xij to be added differently based on the lexicographic distance between the words i and j, namely a value of 1 if the words are adjacent, half if they are one word apart, and so on until the maximum context window distance. This mechanism ensures words which are far away don't count equally as much as the word that words that appear right next to each other. Another issue with counting is that for any sizable corpus, it's almost always the case that the matrix we create in the previous step consists of almost all zeros. That is, they are sparse. And on the flip side, values that are non-zero appear an extremely large amount of number of times. For example, word pairs like elephant and plasma are very unlikely to ever be seen together, which is true for most word pairs in any sizable vocabulary. On the other hand, words like should and have are almost always seen together, raising its counts several orders of magnitude above the rest. And we, we resolve this blow up by taking the log of the value we obtain for xij, which renders the numbers sensible enough to work with. Incorporating everything so far, we can derive the loss function and eventually come to this equation to formula formally represent the idea behind GLOVE. xij exists within the out logarithm as explained previously, and the w's of i and j are the vectors for the input and output respectively. And the equation introduces bias terms b, which act as mitigation for words that are simply prevalent, such as particles a and the, or pronouns he, she, etc. And finally, the weighting function in the beginning corrects for rare and noisy word pairs, which could be anything from typos or made-up words, and also pairs that are overly abundant, such as it is or should have, as mentioned before. And here we arrive at the loss function in its entirety. So models are tested on the word analogy data set of about 20,000 questions of the form A is to B as C is to blank, as authored by Mikolo Vitalia. And we see that GLOVE performs quite well, especially in the semantic portion of the data set, which is expected because they had captured the semantic data in all of the words. And the experimental results also show that GLOVE is faster and produces better embeddings than all of its competitors on a consistent basis, which again is natural since the premise itself was more explicit in capturing the semantics of the word's context. However, some of the sentiment is lost when we begin to look at the literature subsequent to the publication of GLOVE, where whether its improvement actually translates into better performance overall in the NLP model is called into question. Many studies now show that it performs similar to, to, to word to vec or anything other on the same caliber when the entire task of the text classification or general NLP task is concerned. Further, the fact that GLOVE producing these embeddings in a faster manner is somewhat negated by the fact that most relevant corpora have already been compiled with GLOVE and its competitors, and researchers use these pre-chained vectors for their studies, where only the speed of the download remains an issue. But still, the scheme is used prevalently in many NLP areas as of current and serves as a very good benchmark and it would be a silly oversight to, cross com to not cross-compare the performance of GLOVE when evaluating one's latest language-based project.